How's it going people? Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, go over to Instagram, Turkish LDN, follow me on there and go over to Twitter, Turkish LDN, follow me on there because I'm going to be bringing out a lot of content and a lot of updates through those social media channels over the next year and over the next season. So make sure you're following me on there as well. I need to start using the community tab on, on YouTube as well. So I'm going to I'm gonna try and get it all sorted. I'm going to try and get it all sorted and be a bit more consistent throughout this season. Um, bring you lot, some Premier League previews, reviews, all that stuff. Let me know below what other content you want to see, what other um, content you want me to talk about. Because that's what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for you guys. So you lot let me know what you want to hear and i'll bring that to you obviously you've got a lot of love for that deluded guna link up in the last video if you haven't already go and check that as well um we're looking to bring something out hopefully every week but it might it might end up being every couple of weeks you know what i mean it depends on our circumstances throughout the season so we'll see but he will be on supporters club a lot um more often this season because i see that a lot of people like his opinion like the way he presents himself and um, that's why i brought him on because i could see something in him um he's worked very hard to get to where he is and if you haven't go to his channel deluded guna and subscribe to him now as well um but it's like a rumor roundup today they've got kind of dry since the nicolas pepe signing obviously that gassed a lot of us but the every day that goes past i start to, to wonder and think a bit more do you know what i mean because we we have more money than this like Let's be real with ourselves. We've got more money than this. And everyone's just hooked on the fact that, oh, Raul got this done. He's a miracle. No, 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 no. Miracle worker. If we get a centre-back in, a solid, solid centre-back, then cool. I'll start talking about a miracle worker. But we've bought in Nicolas Pepe. Yes, I'm guessed. Yes, it's a player I want. But even look at yesterday's performance against Barcelona. Yes, we didn't have Pepe. They didn't have Messi, they didn't have players either. But in the end, defensive errors cost us. And it's been, it's, it's, it's been a similar trend, a similar pattern throughout pre-season and throughout the last decade at Arsenal Football Club. And what I wonder is, obviously with the Kronke videos and whatnot, like I, I've stated before, we can spend 150 mil this summer. We can do that. No risk, no reward. So if Kronke wanted to, we could go out and get the centre-back we are craving. One of the RB Leipzig centre-backs, ideally, Konate or Opomakano, one of them two would be ideal. But it doesn't look like we're going to do it. The rumours have dried up. Um, apparently, there's a final push for Kieran Tierney this week. Obviously, there's three days left of the window, so that final push... I don't understand. A final push to get a 25 million player, like done and dusted just sort it out Arsenal if you want him go get him and it's not even a case of if you want him you must want him because we've been linked to him for time now just go get the you and let's move because we really still need a centre back and if you don't do that like you're in danger of yes Pepe has gassed man yes Pepe is is a fantastic signing for Arsenal Football Club and and he will be for years to come but we could go to Newcastle away, lose or draw, have a, have a sketchy performance at the back. And that Nicolas Pepe gas kind of goes because it's back to the, it's back to usual. It's back to, ah, oh, this, yeah, this is Arsenal. This is their problems. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because that's all it's going to take. That's all it's going to take. On the other hand, we could go Newcastle away, blitz them 4-5-1. Pepe gets on the score sheet, Laka Oba, the Ozil, everyone's flying. And the season starts off very well, especially going into tough fixtures against Liverpool away and Tottenham at home. But it's, it's, it's on a knife edge right now. And Arsenal Football Club, Kronke, they're taking a massive risk if they don't look to bring in a quality centre-back. I have said in the previous video that I would wait until next summer. But like I said, the more I think about it, the more I think... We should have done it this summer as well. We we could have got Pepe in and a solid centre back. And people are probably gonna look at this video like, ah, oh, shut up, Turkish, this and that. Like you're getting ahead of yourself and whatnot. But it's what I've been stating all summer. I've always stated we've got more than forty five million to spend. I've always stated we've got minimum seventy five to ninety mil, and that's just off what we've made. 
Now, if Kronke wants to take a risk, he could put in another 60 mil and it makes it 150 mil. 60 mil is not even a lot. You take that risk, you get Champions League football, you make the money back, you, you're obliging to the FFP laws. It's not like you can't do that. You can do it, but if you obviously go and do it and then you don't get the reward for it, you end up in Europa League again and again and you don't make that money back, then it's a problem. Then you get banned from European competition. The European competition would be banned from is probably Europa League. And in the end, if we can't win the Europa League in this season or next, if we're in it again, then really, really and truly, I'd like to take a year out of it to focus on the league, to focus on getting back into, into form league-wise and, and building from there. Because Europa League, look, this is our third season in a row. We're going into it. I really expect, look, we've gone semi-final, we've gone final. This season, I can't say expect to win it, but we should. We should. This is Arsenal Football Club. If we're, if we're bigger than Europa League, if we're, if we're better than the Europa League, then we should be winning it. And, and, and that is obviously, it, it, when February comes and the Champions League team drop out, you'll have to see who comes in then. But still, that's, Champions League is what we are trying to aspire to right now, what we are trying to get to. It's what we believe our club are. It's the level we should be at. So we shouldn't be too worried about the Champions League teams that might potentially drop down. But at the end of the day, like we said, final push for Kieran Tierney. Hopefully we get that over the line. I've said with that as well, we'll end up with three left-backs. But I guess Monreal is going to occupy a, a, a centre-back position next year. Potentially, doesn't fill me with any hope. But then again... Who does at the back for Arsenal Football Club right now? Do you know what I mean? Socrates is probably our most consistent from last season, but even he is prone to a bit of crazy moments, like just falling in front of players' feet and and heading their kneecaps and shit like that, and conceding fouls and penalties. And like he 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 has improved the defense. I love his mentality. He is someone that wants to win at all costs, and even this dropping in front of players stuff. It's something we've lacked. Like what, what Socrates, Kalasinac, even Xhaka to an extent, what these sort of players have brought is a new mentality to Arsenal, a new look. If you remember, it was not too long ago that Troy Deeney was talking about cojones and we don't have the balls to compete. So they know how to play against Arsenal. Two years since then, we've improved on that aspect, at least. At the very least, we've improved there. Because we're not... We're not a soft touch anymore. Team can't come and kick us off the park anymore. Like we, we do shy away in certain situations, but it's not a case of how it was before. When any time we played a team from the bottom half, it could potentially become an issue because they was all going with the same tactics. They was all going with kick them a little bit. They'll shy away, and we'll take control of the game. That that that's turned around now, and credit to Socrates and Torreira and Xhaka and Kolasinac, these sorts of players that. That essentially don't have it on the pitch. You, you saw you saw Colasso that with the Ozil situation. I didn't speak much on that because I don't want to speak much on that. Um, but Colasso is real. Do you get me? Colasso is someone that takes things head on. That's a natural reaction you saw from him in that moment. Obviously, the guy had a knife or it looked like a metal bar or something. And his first instinct was, "What are you mad?" And, and go for him instead of just running away or closing the door or something like that. But yeah. Um, thank God both are, both are safe Obviously that's London isn't it? It's happening all over the gaff Not just football players It's happening daily and weekly In all areas across London So it, it, that, that, that's a problem we have in London But like I said uh, Glad that Kolasinac and Ozil And whoever else was in the car Apparently both wives were in the car Were all safe But yeah Koscielny is another rumour well, another rumour. We know he doesn't want to be at Arsenal Football Club no more. Bordeaux and Rennes are engaging in talks, it said on Sky Sports, but their valuation is some way off. I don't understand how the valuation can be some way off. Surely Arsenal Football Club are just going to let him go. I'm not saying for free, but there must be some sort of value there that Bordeaux and Rennes are offering. If the val if the valuation is so far off, they're offering something. Just take the fucking money. I don't give a shit. 500k, 1 million. Who cares? Who actually cares? Because at the end of the day, someone that doesn't want to be at the club, he's someone that's not worth 90k a week, he's someone that can't play two games in a week. It's, 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 it's easy. It's easy. And if money is such a big problem, then why are we going to go spend 90k a week on this guy? Like, why would we do that? Just let, let him go. 
Bordeaux or Rennes, accept both offers. Let let him have the choice of both. He deserves that at least. He's been part of essentially what is a banter era at Arsenal because we've done some fucked up things on and off the pitch in the past ten years, results wise, transfers wise, negotiations wise. So essentially, Koscielny was a big part of the team that went through the banner era. He wasn't a, he wasn't a major part of it, but he was part of a defence that we haven't been happy with. We haven't been happy with. Have we ever been happy with the defence while koscielny has been in it? Maybe with Murta Saka for a period or two, but essentially it's time to move on. Just let him go to wherever he wants to go to in front. The guy wants to take a, take a cut in wages. That's how much he wants to leave Arsenal. He wants to take a cut in wages. He wants to go to a, a lesser club. F- finished. The guy's finished. We might as well be finished with him. Just move him. Three days to go. Tierney in. Koscielny out. Mustafi should be out, but the guy's fucking playing. So he ain't going nowhere. And the centre-back thing ain't happening. I'm going to be honest, this centre-back thing ain't, ain't happening. And then, and you know what makes me laugh as well? This Philip Coutinho hype over the weekend. Like, it's like, come on. Come on, don't let the Pepe sign in gas everyone. Philip Coutinho, like, we're not getting Coutinho on loan. And then when you hear 27 million loan fee, like, oh, Arsenal going to do that. Arsenal really going to do that. We didn't pay no 17 million for Caballos to come here on a year loan. Arsenal didn't do that. We didn't do that. We might have paid 5 mil, but we didn't do no 17 mil. Like, that's outrageous for most clubs. You don't hear that, let alone Arsenal football club that don't want to fucking spend money giving it away for a loan. But this Coutinho stuff made me laugh. I saw everyone, Raul's going to get it done, miracle worker, this and... Calm down, obviously. We signed Pepe, cool, like... We... That's a very good signing. Like I said, fantastic signing. But there's more to be done. There's more. It's, it, this is reminding me so much of that Ozil time when we signed Ozil and everyone went quiet, including me, for a period, thinking, yep, change is coming. And then the next summer, it was more of the same shit. Well, Sanchez, but didn't really build properly for where we wanted to go. So hopefully, what I want to see in January, fix some issues we have there, especially if we're competing for top four. And we lack in certain departments because if Bellerin doesn't come back fit enough, if he gets injured again, if Holden gets injured again, then we're going to need someone in January. So the work needs to be done. If we don't bring in a centre-back now, then they need to be proactively working on someone potentially in January and really and truly a big name next summer. The 70 million we spent on Pepe, let's go spend 80, 90 on a centre-back or let's go do the Canate and for Meccano 50, 60 we can get it done now. I don't even know why I'm saying next year, but I just don't think it's realistic now. It's not going to happen. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this final push for Tierney, Koscielny to Bordeaux and Renz. And let me know what you think about the lack of names coming forward regarding the centre-back position. I don't believe we've been linked to a solid, solid centre-back, quality centre-back all summer. All summer. I know Anderson was linked for a little bit. He's gone Leon now. Obviously, Salib has come in, but he's coming in next year and he's only 19. He's only played 17 games in League One. Like, we don't know how he's going to come out. So surely we should be looking at that big name. But we haven't. It doesn't seem like we are. So that better be the focus throughout next season. I don't give a shit if the transfer window closed or not. These, these men, Raul, Edu, they need to be working on a centre-back. Not see how things go because... Even if we was to concede 15 less goals than we did last season, we still need a fucking centre-back in. I'm showing you, the quality is not there. And it's ageing. It's ageing. Uh, it doesn't seem like Mavroponis is going to get an, uh, uh, another chance anyway, because why wasn't he featured much last season? So he might be, he might be surplus to requirements next year. Do you know what I mean? He, Saliba might be coming in, he might be going, Mustafi needs to go, bring in someone else. That, there's still a lot of work to be done. So Arsenal fans stay grounded. Um, like I said, one Newcastle negative result and it's it's back to, oh shit, this is the Arsenal we know. Pepe looks good, creates a few chances, Arsenal lose. You know what I mean? There's that meme going around that um, Lacazette passes to Pepe, Pepe passes to this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and then it ends up 6-1 to Liverpool or some shit like that. Because that's potentially shit that can happen. It's been happening throughout the last 10 years. So let's make sure... 
we don't get ahead of ourselves and we take every day as it comes right now until the end of the window, which is three days away, three days and a few hours. And let's see how our team lines up against Newcastle because Laka needs to be fit. 100% Laka needs to be fit. And Pepe needs to be ready. I know we had African um, Cup of Nations. I know he returned, obviously, from a late holiday. I know he signed for a new club, but really and truly playing. Reese Nelson looking sharp. Joel Willock looking good. So let's see, man. Let's see, because this defence can just unravel all of that fucking work that they attack, attack do. So let's see how it goes, people. But love for all the subscriptions. Love for all the con um, feedback. Sorry, the comments and everything else. I appreciate it, as always. And yeah, I'm We'll wait a couple of days. We'll do a little deadline day thing. But we'll see how it goes, people. Love, love. love.